A Visit with Pioneer Family Descendants by the Greece Historical Society presented on May 10th, 2022 at the Greece Public Library. Welcome. This is our last Tuesday night program for the season. We'll be back in uh, September. Tonight we have uh, Murray Poynian and Joey Snyder. We're, I'm just going to let them introduce the program. I haven't seen this program before, so uh, so welcome everybody. Hello, I'm Joanne Ward Snyder, um, and this is Marie Poynton. Uh, we're co-authors of the book um, Pioneer Families of Greece, New York, and this is up close with our descendant families that helped contribute. And also with us, we have Carolyn Carehart over here, as well as Deb Cole Myers in the front row, and um, Lori Murphy. So um, this was a project um, in honor of the birthday, the 200th birthday of the town of Greece. And um, in trying to find an appropriate uh, project, we decided to celebrate the pioneer families who were in the town of Greece by 1872. And we decided to use that date because the town was incorporated in 1822, that's the celebration. And we figured those that were there within the first 50 years would be a good base of people. We could use the 1870 census as well as the 1872 town map to be sure people were here. And your pioneers, if you were here by then, it was mostly woodland and water. <laughs> um, the book was published in uh, December of 2021. There's copies available for purchase by check or um, cash out of the desk as you leave for $30. It's also available at the Historical Society gift shop and at their web store. And you can also buy it from your easy chair from Amazon. Just put in the words Pioneer in Greece and it will pop up. Um, I came to the Historical Society a year ago, March. I had just retired, I'm a nurse, and was asking for Bill about volunteer opportunities. So we were talking about doing a book, and with only nine months to do it, it had to be like a building or a group or family. So we decided we would do that. Poor Marie, I think, got the next email that said, can you work with this girl? <laughs> and we had never met. And I kind of took the steep jump off the volunteer wagon and took into this project. We did it very well. It was a true pandemic um, project. We did it uh, it, uh, as families came in. It was either hers, usually Shalat, and South Greece. North Greece along the ridge was usually mine. And we wrote them individually from our homes. We didn't even meet each other in person until July when the book was almost half done. We did everything by Zoom, uh, email, and the telephone. So it can be done. So we're proud to say that after nine months, we had a book. Um, Helen Keller said, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much, and that characterizes our books. Um, we didn't choose who we were going to uh, profile in the book, they chose us. We sent out through advertising and um, at various historical societies, um, Facebook, the media, newspapers, magazines, looking for descended families. They found us. So the collaboration between family members with the experienced researchers at the Historical Society led to a discovery of much more material and greater knowledge of our individual families. So it's a great project. The benefits to the Historical Society included keeping in line with our organizational goals to collect, record, and preserve town of Greece history uh, for current and future generations. Um, they, um, we obtained photos, stories, and documents from descended families that had never been seen outside the home before. So it was a real privilege and honor for us to be entrusted with that. Um, the book is Community Education, which is in published form, as well as through programs like this. Um, the information that we obtained on these families, most of it ended up in the book. Some things weren't quite appropriate for the book, you know, in the content. But it's now on file at the Greece Historical Society for future researchers. So lots of win-wins. It was also a wonderful project, and that's meaningful. Uh, people of any age would be interested in these stories, and uh, it's just there. The other thing is, while we're a nonprofit, um, you do have to pay rg &E to keep the lights on. So you're always thinking about fundraising, and this is a fundraiser for us. The benefits to the descendant contributors, and they might have more when they come up here and talk, is that they get to have their family story told in a publication and for their current generation in the future. 
uh, they had the potential to meet different lines of their family tree. They got the services of experienced researchers through the Historical Society. Combining the family and our things, um, we got many more photos, documents, and stories. I had a couple families from multiple generations um, out. Um, one family, the Mitchell generation, I think they're like in their seventh or eighth generation since coming to the country. And I had three different, from three different lines of their family contact me. So, and then um, a couple people on Ancestry had photos I wanted, so I found a few more, <laughs> asking them for permission for the photos. <laughs> so we all gained. Um, the family finally is recognized publicly as a Greece uh, pioneer family. So it was a win-win for all. It was a pleasure to work with all of you um, on this project. Um, volume two is in the works. We realized pretty quickly after we started volume one that there were lots of families. So um, we guaranteed everybody for the first book we would present at least one of their families, and the other one potentially for a future book. So this book we started working on in January, about two weeks after we gave ourselves off for the holidays, and it will be published sometimes in 2023. And Marie, at the end of the presentation, will tell you that there's a few spots left. If you want to do your family, she will tell you where to go to look for that information. Every family has a story to tell, and that's our premise. It doesn't matter if your family was here for 10 years. One family, that's all they were, but it was their stepping stone to their life future. Things that they learned and experienced here helped them out west. Or if you're a family member, like these ladies here, their families are still here in Greece and represented. So um, today, we feature three pioneer families. Um, Carolyn Carehart is presenting the Adam Bulkmark family. Deb Cole Myers will do the Abram Cole family. And um, Maureen Murphy will do the Ida Kenyon family. So I'm going to hand it over to Carolyn. Thank you. Um, before I tell you about Adam Balkmer, I'd like to preface it by saying that when I was 19 years old, the biggest problem I had was figuring out how I was going to get $360 for a round trip ticket to Switzerland to visit a friend. Um, every time I think about Adam Balkmer's voyage to America, I think about the current refugees and immigrants that are fleeing their homelands to come to America and other countries. There were no guarantees when they left their uh, home country where they were going to live, where they were going to get food, where they were going to get a job. So they really, they really left with nothing. In 1854, Adam Volkmer, at the age of 19, left his family and home in Darmstadt, Germany, with his fiance to avoid being enlisted in the Kaiser's army. They boarded a ship called the New Era. It was its maiden voyage. It had 410 passengers. 40 passengers died before the ship even left port in Bremen. I guess they didn't have pre-screening in those days. Uh, the 41-day journey ended up being 46 days as it met rough seas and storms before hitting a sandbar off the coast of Sandy Hook, New Jersey. Today there's a memorial there honoring the people who died. The ship capsized into the cold November ocean and more than 250 people were swept away. Due to the rough seas and location, rescue efforts could not be started for 24 hours, leaving many clinging to the scaffolding and mask. 152 people, though, were saved, and with his fiance lost at sea and only a $5 gold piece, Adam Volkmer made his way to New York City. In New York, he worked for the New York Central Railroad and ended up doing a lot of other jobs. Eventually, he made his way to western New York and bought property in Walworth and Wheatland before settling in Greece. Why Greece? We don't know. Um, nobody ever bothered to ask him, I guess, or they're not here to tell us. Um, we think maybe it was because of the heavy German and Belgian settlements in the area and that the farming land was good here. In 1865, it was a really pivotal year for Adam. First, he moved with his wife, Catherine, to Greece and built a log cabin 
near the corner of what is now Long Pond and Ridgeway Avenue. He owned 37 acres of land from that corner down to what is now Mitchell Road. He also owned 87 acres on the south side of Ridgeway Avenue, which is now the Canal Ponds Complex. Secondly, he brought his parents and three siblings remaining in Germany over to Greece. He built a larger home on his original property to accommodate his enlarged family. And thirdly, about this time, Adam was a very active member along with 20 other founding families in the establishment of a permanent worship site for the Catholic Church St. John the Evangelist, which everybody I think still recognizes on the north side of Ridge Road. In thanksgiving for his rescue at sea, Adam commissioned, and it was the only non-religious stained glass window depicting the Star of Hope and the New Era ship. This was um, installed in the church. He also unearthed and saved a discarded bell that was used from the courthouse of Rochester, and it was put on the top of the church. Both of these items are still preserved today and on the property of St. John's. Adam and Catherine had nine children, many of which worked farms and orchards in the vicinity of Long Pond, Ridgeway, and Mitchell Road, along with in Wheatland and Burgeon. This is my fifth generation story and heritage, all because Adam was saved at sea and he had a $5 gold piece in his pocket. Thank you. I can, I'll answer. Any Um, <laughs> in 2015, St. John the Evangelist Church celebrated their 150th anniversary. And I'm the historian at St. John's Church. So we had a really big party. This up on top is my cousin as the Adam Volkmer Bible. Wow. I've never seen it. <laughs> uh, this picture here is in church at the celebration. This here, for many of you, is Butch Faulkner. This is Joanne, who through the course of things I found out was related to my great-great-grandmother. And so, wow. we've been friends ever since. Yes. This is her mother, Bonnie. They represent um, the Riley family. Yeah. And this is Jean Preston. What's his first name? Jean, Jean. Preston. He's oh, here. No, not Jean. I know Jean. I know Jean. <laughs> the Richardson. I can't remember. I can't remember again, Mr. Richardson. <laughs> yeah, this is Mr. Richardson, who was the principal for the Greece Central, one of the Greece Central High Schools. Dave. 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 Yeah. Okay, okay. And this picture here is a picture at the Plantation House. We had a big dinner and celebration. We brought lots of the relics that were left from the original church. And this is myself, Bonnie, and Ion Riley, all relatives of mine. If I can answer any other questions for anybody, I'd be glad to. What? There's a house. <laughs> <laughs> this is a present day picture of my great grandfather's house. Um, Adam Volkmer gave property to all of his children, and my grandparents' house was across the, is across the street from Park Ridge Hospital. Um, ironically, it was not sold until 1971 when my grandmother moved next door and they built a housing project all around her. And so she had them built her own house. She didn't have to share it with her mother-in-law and everybody in the family. She had her own house. But this over here, this over here, um, when the house went for sale, it was really ironic. The person who had this house and bought it after my grandmother left was my daughter's travel soccer coach. <laughs> and they lived in this house until just this past fall. And they found this picture in the house, which I had never seen. And you could tell it was taken back in the, in the 1850. It wasn't very clear. But this, this gentleman I know is Joseph Faulkner. And that was Adam's son. And the rest of them, 
I'm not sure who they are. It's too blurry. But and this is a picture of Catherine and Joseph. Oh no, Delia. Delia. Our grandmothers were great grandmothers were sisters. Yeah, Delia and Joseph. This is my grandmother Martha and Maurice, and this is their son Clifford and Doris. Anybody else? Oh, and this one. This one's really special. I went over to talk with um, Joanne, and all of a sudden she pulls this picture out, and I start looking at it, and I think, who's that lady? This old lady. I had never seen it before. This is a picture of my great-grandmother's mother. I had never seen it before. And so I figured this was my great-aunt, but then when I looked at the date on it, I thought, 1924. This is a picture of my mother when she was two years old and my grandfather. I mean, it's four generations. So this was really, I mean, it was the highlight of the day for me. <laughs> and this is where our collaboration helps in bringing yeah, families right. together. Sure. Oh. Oh. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and then we went to see the exhibit two weeks ago. Yeah. And this is my son. This is my grandson, my daughter, and myself. So it's another two generations. So, so all together, there were seven generations of Baltimore. So. And this was my grandmother. That's their farm, the barn. This was their dog, King, that we were scared to death of. It's a chicken coop. This was their, um, my great aunt, who was a sister of St. Joseph. And this is Joseph, Delia, this is Sister Honorata, or Clara Ann, who my mother was named after, and this was Maurice, my grandfather. And this, I think it's one of the, one of um, Adam's son worked for a brewery, and that's a picture of the guys at the brewery. <laughs> that works. Yeah, any questions? Any questions? Well, I don't have a question, but I have a comment. I just finished reading a diary that our great uncle um, Charles wrote after or while he was on a trip to Germany in 1896. He went with a um, Gus, Gus, who was a, a minister in the area. And they did a 14 day journey that sounded Similar to the one you just talked about. 1896 or 1996? 1896. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. It's yeah. quite detailed. If you'd like to read it sometime, I'm sure. glad to share it with you. Thank you. Yes. Can I answer any other questions for anybody? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. And next we have Deborah Cole Myers. I'm not tripping over this. I'm not tripping over this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I've got so many things to deal with here now. Okay. Your slides. Okay. I should make Becky do it. Okay. Well, good evening. Thanks for coming. My name is Deborah Cole Myers. It's in my given middle name. Can you so, use the microphone? Oh, sorry. This, this thing in my hand? You yeah. Don't? Okay. yeah. Get up. Yeah. Hi. No? No. Keep, no. Talk. Hello? Am I not supposed to touch that? Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. People don't usually have trouble hearing me, so that's yeah, well. not a surprise. Okay. Um, Marie asked us, or at least me, to talk about how I got interested in family and local history in the first place. Um, my name is, as I say, Deborah Cole Myers, and while I've not always lived in Greece, I was, I did grow up here. I'm a Greece Olympia class of 1970 graduate, which probably makes me history. Uh, and when I retired, Greece called me back home, so I live here again. I was a lucky kid. I'll be lucky if I can do this. My, uh, my mom, Arlene Emily Cole Myers, and here she is at 17 and 97, grew up in Greece, New York, a fifth generation product of the Coles of South Greece Road, which is now known as Elm Grove Road. 
She was proud of her family and her heritage and did everything she could to educate her kids and anybody else within earshot about the Coles and the Kenyans. I was the youngest of the family and therefore often the only person within earshot. She saw no problem in telling the same stories again and again, resulting in my actually remembering some of them. Another way she and her mother educated us was to make sure the back of every photograph had as much information written on it as would fit. Names, places, dates. If there was room, the people's ancestors were also listed. Again, repetition was key. It was an obsession with my mother. If you or I are on the phone for a while, we doodle drawing meaningless designs destined for the wastebasket. Not Arlene, the back of any available envelope was invariably covered in lists of descendants. <laughs> when I was clearing out her stuff five years after she had passed, I found no fewer than 11 of these mini trees in one box. And there's, that's just the ones that never fit, found them bin. Because of my mom, I knew so much about the Coles and the Kenyans. Both families farmed on the South Greece Road and intermarried. Plus, mom's mother's side, which came from England. And she didn't stop with her own ancestors. My dad wasn't very forthcoming about his family, so almost everything I knew about them came from my mom having pumped her in-laws. <laughs> and it all got written down and told and told. All this interest took, in my case, I now know cousins on both sides of the Atlantic, living and gone. I have visited my mother's mother's father's father's birthplace in a tiny village in Sussex. I have met a whole slew of paternal cousins in Illinois I had not known existed. And in 2019, my niece Rebecca Quinn and I were fortunate enough to be welcomed in for a private tour of that coal farmhouse on Elk Grove Road. There's Becky on the porch pretending she's her great-great-grandmother. <laughs> I am more strongly connected with that niece, my siblings, and a couple of our coal side cousins. And three years ago, a small family committee put together the first coal family reunion in 44 years. It used to be an annual event. Here's a shot of the one in 1954. The last major coal reunion held in 1975 was convened by my great uncle Clarence Webster Cole, nicknamed Coley. He wanted us to get together while he was still alive to attend it, so he dubbed it Coley's Wake. <laughs> uncle Clarence, born in 1899, was one of the youngest of my grandfather Ben Cole's 11 siblings. He put together his memoirs of the family and the town of his childhood, and much of what I know springs from that. The, 29th, sorry, the 2019 Cole family reunion was held in Grease Canal Park, part of which was once the Cole Farm. Very special, and over 80 people came. Considering that only three of my grandfather's generation had children, the family seems to have expanded somewhat. <laughs> Sadly, some of them have now passed, so we are even more grateful that we met or reconnected with this beautiful clan. And now, I get to go play at the Greece Historical Museum with terrific people like Murray Poynton, Lee Strauss, Bill Sowers, Alan Mueller, and others. I like to think I'm useful to them, but I am already hugely repaid because of information they have helped me find and assemble about my family and the friends and neighbors about whom my parents and grandparents often spoke. Lee, for example, was able to answer my years-long question of how my great-great-grandparents, Fanny Callista Webster Spawn and Charles Henry Kenyon, even met because she was born and raised in Orleans County. Within minutes, Lee handed me a piece of paper showing that Fanny's first husband, Reverend Spawn, was the minister of Greece Baptist Church before he died. The Kenyans and the Coles were active members for generations. 
So it was only natural that the widow Spawn and Charles Henry should find each other. Working in the files, I get to find cool stuff like this. That's my mom's school, Greece District Number 11, which was on Ridge Road, west of Mount Reed Boulevard. And that's my mom, center row, second from the right in the dark dress, and the haircut she always hated, but standing next to her best friend. And of course, Marie and Joanne are putting together these wonderful books. My favorite part is, starts on page 34, by the way. <laughs> Ancestry.com has been a wonderful resource as well. I am building so many layers and connecting with so many people. Although I warn you, every answer seems to bring up 10 new questions. My grandson says this next part is kind of weird, so I hope you don't get, I, I don't creep anybody out. Please bear with me. Okay. <clears throat> My mom passed away a little over 10 years ago at the age of 98. She still had her memories and she was still telling the stories. So in closing, I would like to tell my mom a few of the things I've learned since she's been gone. One, because she left it behind for me to find. And two things I'm absolutely certain she did not know. Oops, sorry. Mom, I found your grandmother Ida Kenyon Cole's 1921 journal. Thank you. It details her everyday life for 11 months, soon after her husband, my great-grandfather Abram Cole Jr., had gone back to Greece from Oakton, Vir sorry, Oakton, Virginia, to seek medical attention from the trusted Dr. Hillman. Unfortunately, nothing more could be done, and he passed away here. She and some of her adult children were still living in Virginia, who knew, and working at her cousin's flower seed business. Sorry, I keep hitting the wrong one. That's my great-great-grandfather, by the way. Great-grandfather, working in that seed business. This woman came alive to me through her own words, and I will be forever grateful for her experience. I have since visited the area in which they sold their flowers and seeds, and while I have yet to find the house she had built, I am still looking and meeting so many interesting and helpful people in the process. Mom, we found out. <laughs> Someday I'll learn this. Mom, we found out through the Greece Historical Society that your great great grandfather, Stephen Cole, was the man who surveyed the line between Gates and Greece when Greece became Greece. What a rush in this bicentennial birthday of the town. He and his wife and a young son are buried within walking distance of where you grew up. Did you know that? And wouldn't my eldest brother, the late Kenneth Lloyd Myers, have been pleased to learn that land surveying ran in the family since he himself was a licensed surveyor? And Mom, I know you never could have known this because we would have heard about it a million times. Your two times great Aunt Sarah Cole Truesdale, sister to the original owner of the Cole Farmstead, was indicted for voting with Susan B. Anthony. <laughs> There's her indictment. She's even mentioned in Susan B.'s diary. Finding that out and searching for how in the world did that happen, led me to the census entry that shows the Truesdale home was literally next door to the Anthony House on Madison Street. Oh, wow. That's why I wore this shirt. <laughs> How did we not know this? My theory is that the family disapproved, so it was not talked about. <laughs> Fun for us, but probably not so much for her. Family history, especially if you are lucky enough to be living near where so much of it happened, 
is just a really cool way for people who came before you to become real in your head. The more I find, the better connected I feel to my family and to my town. Some of these people I know or knew. Some I'm only beginning to know. But I know where I come from. And to some extent, why? <clears throat> I do not consider myself in any way an expert in genealogy or local history. So if you're just getting started, don't worry about your lack of experience. It all starts with one interesting fact and a question. Thank you. Yes. Yes. You can't see it very well from the road. Yeah. They had those trees planted many, many years ago. But yes, that is the original. I think they call it Greek Revival. It was, you know, in that style. But yes, that's the original Cole House. And the original Kenyon House that Maureen will tell you about was right down the road, and that's still there as well. And the house next door to the and original call is the carriage barn from. The, yes, the, the house next door, which my mother called the tenant house. And she had lived at both of them at one point or another. That's still there, too. Okay, I will now ask my second cousin, Maureen Murphy, to come up and talk more about the Kenyan side, since she was immersed way. in that like I was the Coles. I'm Maureen Murphy. Yeah, you practically have to eat that. <laughs> Pardon? You practically have to eat the microphone. Oh, okay. Is that good? <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. All right, and we'll start here. This is the picture of the Kenyon homestead um, where I lived when I was born. Um, when I was born, um, my dad had just come home a year before from uh, World War II, and my mom and dad and I lived in the Kenyon homestead with my grandmother and grandfather Cole and my great-grandfather George Huber, who you're going to see a picture of later. Um, so this house has just been remodeled in the last few years. It was in the family until 2003. Um, the, fam the picture on the left was painted by my aunt, my mother's sister, Kay Irons Cole, who was an art teacher in the Greece School um, District for many years. And she also did a number of paintings at the Greece Baptist Church, which I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Okay. This is a picture of our Uncle Clarence, who wrote the, the um, monograph that I passed around for you to look at. So, Talking about family, um, certainly when I grew up, I took my family for granted because I was immersed in it from the day I was born. And being a little kid with three grandparents and two parents in the house, I don't think I um, wanted for much that first 18 months of my life. Um, but my mom and dad were building our house in what my mother called the barnyard behind the house when, when uh, we lived there, and we moved in after my brother was born, um, and I was not very happy about it. I, I dubbed the new house the dirty old house, even though um, the homestead was already over 100 years old. Um, I did not want to leave. But Coley tells a lot of these stories in his book, which is passing around. Um, Okay, and I'll show you some pictures of Shirley Terrace in a little bit. Um, for me, family included cousins all over the place. They were up and down the street. Um, when my grandfather um, decided to subdivide the farm into Berkshire Meadows in the 30s, he um, sold lots or gave lots to a lot of his family. Deb's family, I believe, lived there for a while. Um, 
a number of people that I've talked to over the years have lived there. One man I met a few years ago um, when I told him that I um, lived off Elm Grove Road, he said, well, he lived there too. Dale, who's here, a friend of mine, introduced me to him. And uh, he said that my grandfather had given his grandfather work during the Depression, and he had been very grateful for him. He was an electrician. So he helped build some of the houses that my grandfather built at that time. So stories do keep coming back, and uh, that's, that's been a nice effect of, of knowing family history. Um, but when we were kids, you know, we used to tease my grandparents, and we used to tease Uncle Coley. Um, anytime they'd start telling stories, we'd say, oh, here we go again with more when I was a boy, you know, when I was a girl. Um, and so we were immersed in stories all the time, but um, it was very special. And I've grown to appreciate that legacy as I've gotten older as well. Um, which is really what's brought us here tonight, I guess, too. Um, so when I moved back to Greece in 2006, after my mother passed away, I decided to buy her house. I couldn't um, give it up at that time. And let's see if that's the next picture it should be. Oh, no. Actually, this is Uncle Clarence, um, his 80th birthday, I believe. And that's my mother on the right and my Aunt Bernice, my oldest my mother's oldest sister, celebrating his 80th birthday with him. And this picture um, is the one that Deb showed you a few minutes ago of our great-grandfather, Abram Cole. And after I saw that picture, I had to go get this picture. And this is my oldest nephew, Chris, when he was about 30, which was about 20 years ago. But I couldn't quite get over how much the family resemblance was um, mm -hmm. with more than 120 years between the two of them. Um, so that's another fun thing about genealogy. And Abe died within a year or so after that picture, I do, I think. Yeah. And this is George Huber. Um, who I was going to tell you about at the end, but I'll tell you about him now. One day I went to hear Bill Sowers talk about um, early airplanes in Monroe County, and during the middle of his talk, he heard me blurt out, that's my grandfather and my cousin. <laughs> and that's a picture he showed that was from 1947, when they took their first air flight. <laughs> And I didn't know he had it, and he didn't know I was their relative. So that was kind of fun, too. Um, OK, the Kenyans belong to the First Baptist Church, which was established after the War of 1812, which I guess I didn't even know that. Um, that is now the Greece Baptist Church. Um, and the old church is gone, but I remember seeing it as a kid. I grew up next door to it. Pardon? I grew up next door to the old Greek Baptist Church. Did you really? Yeah. Okay. So you knew probably a lot of Coles, or your family did. What was your family's name? Paul. Paul? Paul Rondell Walker. Okay. Good. Um, okay. Let's see what else is there. Have I not told you here? Okay, so I want to go back a little bit and tell you about how Deb and I got together again. We hadn't seen each other in a number of years since our mothers had both passed, but she called me to get in touch with some of the uh, um, material uh, that I inherited. When my mother passed away, she would lived in, a, in her house for, you know, um, 50 years, and so I, she had inherited from her parents a lot of the old coal stuff. So um, Deb and I got together one day to go through what I had, and she wanted to take it because she was working on the genealogy. And so um, during our conversation, we said, you know, we really need to have another family reunion. The last one was in, what, 1980, 
found in 1980 when Coley launched his book. 74? 74. 74, 75, yeah. Um, so, so that's how um, our, our reunion grew that she showed you the picture from. And we were lucky. We did it in 2019, just before COVID. So we, we managed to pull that off, and, and Rebecca and her family all helped a great deal with that. Um, OK, so, so with retirement, I had more time to look through some of this stuff. Because um, for years, it just sat on my shelves and under the bed and in the attic. But I've been looking a little bit. And I did discover that Coley's book, when he wrote it, only had um, one of my nephews listed, and that was Chris. Chris is the oldest, but he um, had five uh, sisters and brothers, and I had two other nephews. So I had eight nieces and nephews um, that were not listed in Coley's book. So I did at one point do an up upgrade of the Roy Cole branch for my cousins and my um, brothers and sisters. Um, but I, I've also come to appreciate a lot of the similarities of various members in our families, and I'm just going to read off a few of those to you. Um, certainly many of them were farmers. A lot of them became builders, masons, and often were also outdoorsmen. Um, when I, I, t I told you about the picture with Chris and Abe, but Chris and Abe are both um, involved. He was working in a nursery at the time, and Chris is an architect, uh, a landscape architect. So, you know, another similarity, other than they look a bit alike. Um, and if any of you sh shop at Green Acres Nursery, um, you might know Autumn or Ben. They both worked there for a number of years. And they are Chris's brother and sister, which would also be Abe's great-grandchildren. So um, they're still involved in that business. Hunting and fishing is another uh, coal uh, quality. Depp's family have continued to own um, a camp in the Adirondacks that was originally bought by the Cole brothers. And um, we, I understand that our grandmother, great-grandmother Ida, also was uh, an accomplished fisherwoman and did a great uh, bit of fishing in her day. Um, and another cousin, Roger Loudon, uh, owned a charter business on Lake Ontario for a number of years. And he did a lot of writing for various fishing publications. So there's a lot of um, similarities there. And then my grandfather, Roy. Um, let's see if we get to Shirley Tears. Well, let's talk about Kay first. Kay, so Kay was my um, aunt, my, my mother's third sister, second sister, um, who was the artist. And this is a painting that she did that's called Humility. And she gave that to me as my high school graduation present, um, which was in um, 1965 from Greece and Libya. And these are some other paintings of hers that, um, the one on the right is the Jordan River that's at the Greece Baptist Church, and that are, are the, um, the pastor, Mr. Dean and his wife. And that's a, a sketch she did for um, one of their um, annual, I forget which one it was, do you remember that? It was their 150th anniversary 150th, of the church, yeah. and this was a cover to the... She did a lot of pen and ink drawings. I have a couple of really nice ones that she did. And this is 45 Shirley Terrace, um, dubbed by my brother Mommy Terrace when we were kids. Um, and this is the house that I bought. Um, that's my grandfather Roy on the scaffolding. Uh, he and my dad built it. He designed it, and at the time it was, uh, he was the building inspector also of the town of Greece in the 30s and 40s. 
And he designed this house, which apparently was the first split-level house in the town. And it is built out of Medina stone. Probably passed inspection, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it did, yeah. yes. <laughs> Um, it's built out of Miss Dynastone. When my dad was overseas, my mom came home, or my grandfather came home one night and said to mom, give me a hundred dollars. And she said, what for? And he said, just give me a hundred dollars. So she gave him a hundred dollars and he bought a truckload of stone that he learned was being taken up from a street someplace in the city. And that's what he built the house out of. So that's pretty cool. And so I, I wasn't ready to give that house up. So after she passed away, I, I had been living in the city for 25 years. I bought the house and moved back to Shirley Terrace, which was part of, um, it, it runs between Berkshire Drive and Ridgemont Drive, um, parallel with Elm Grove Road. And it's right behind the Kenyon Homestead, which is at 160 Elm Grove. So if you know that little block there. Maryland Drive was our, named after my cousin Marilyn. The Berkshire name came, came from Roy's three daughters, Bernice, Catherine, and Shirley. So there's a lot, of little, a lot of history on that little corner that we all grew up with, Deb's family and mine. Okay, and there's again pictures of Ida and Abe. And uh, this is our centennial commemoration, I guess, which is pretty neat. Um, what else didn't I tell you? Oh, I didn't tell you about the button book. That's another um, historical um, story. Um, in, in 1837, um, a family named the Buttons were moving from Vermont to Niagara County. And this little book describes some of that, that trip. And it also says that they stopped to visit Mrs. Kenyon um, on a snowy night in the winter with three sleighs and nine children. <laughs> and she did not know they were coming. <laughs> and so um, that's another little gem that we have. Uh, stories from our family. And then another writer, you may have seen some of these books, Marilyn um, Wright is my Aunt Burns' <coughs> oldest daughter, and Marilyn Drive is named after her, but she wrote several books that are for sale at the Greece uh, Historical Society, and this one is stories of her growing up in that Greece um, Elm Grove neighborhood. So, she's another writer. And uh, let's see what else did I leave out. My mom figured it out. She thinks that there were about, that, that there were seven generations who have lived at, in the Kenyon house on Elm, Elm Grove Road. After my grandfather retired in the 50s, he did, um, divided the house into apartments. And it became, it stayed apartments for the next 20 or so years. And then my brother Dan bought it um, in the 70s and lived there for um, until 2003. So, so that house did um, get well used by the Cole ancestors. And, um, I think I've told you about pretty much everything. The only other thing I would add in terms of my own experience, I was a social worker for 45 years, so I like to think that um, all this family history had something to do with my deciding and becoming a social worker. I was a family therapist. Um, I taught at SUNY Brockport in the social work department, so I taught a lot about how to look at families. Um, I, I did a lot of work with families, um, and of course, when I learned about Aunt Sarah Truesdale, I was 
thrilled beyond belief because I had been a woman activist for 50 years. Um, and so I, I, it was, I just could, uh, could, still can't believe, you know, that I was lucky enough to have an aunt like that, but still very sad to not understand why nobody in the family talked about her. Our Uncle Charlie, the, the one that went to Germany in 1896, was 15 when she died. So, so they had to know, they had to know that she existed. But we never learned about her until now, and I'm grateful that we have. Um, and yes, I, I'm just so grateful to have all of, all of this documentation. And, and my family really do think I'm a little nuts sometimes, as I did my grandparents. Um, but I, I hope that some, you know, I, I still find myself uh, thinking about all these stories sometimes. And today I'm the one that's telling the when I was a, a girl stories. Um, but I enjoy telling two of my um, nephew, great nephews, have the first name of Cole. So one of my pleasures is to explain to them how they got to be named Cole, and they, I'm not sure they quite figure it out yet. But I'm hoping that some day down the road, maybe they will remember some of these stories, and one of them might go and tell somebody that their, help me out, dead fourth great great grandfather is Julius Caesar McCarty. <laughs> I yeah. did. I did write it on the wall. I think so. Yeah. But I'm hoping that someday they'll tell that story because yeah. that's quite an interesting name too. So I want to thank everybody. I want to thank Marie and Joanne and Bill and the Greece Historical Society and Deb and Rebecca for um, helping me to get involved in all this and hopefully helping some of you too. So um, I guess that's it. Any questions? Did I, did I show all the pictures? get a chance to talk amongst yourselves. But um, what we're doing now is we're doing a number of the families, we're putting them on display at Reese Historical Society and they're there for two months and then we move on to the next set of families. So this is um, the Volkmar one that's on display this month and there's the two Volkmar um, posters that are on display now and there's Carolyn with her family when she came and visited. Here's the list, the rundown of who who's going to be there when. So um, we're going to go right until November and December. So um, the list will be at the uh, Greece Historical Society too, so that you can see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, several prizes that we're going to uh, award in July 10th. So we'll have them available at the Strawberry Festival and we'll have the um, prizes on display too so that you can see them. Um, we'll also be there um, at the Strawberry Festival, Joanne and I. So if you have a copy of the book, you want it autographed, we'll, be, we'll have books there for sale and we'll also have uh, time to autograph your book. So bring them along to that time. So I just want to thank everybody for coming here. And if you have any questions, let us know. We're hot on the trail of volume two. In fact, I've got my 20 families. How are you doing? What are you up to? <laughs> I, I could go with what I have, but if yeah. there's people that are out there that are here tonight, go to the website. It'll tell you how to submit it. It's essentially a questionnaire. Send us a sixth generation chart, either hand done or off your genealogy program. <laughs> and fill out the photo consent and send us those things. I'll be glad to do you. I've got most of my families, um, but there's a couple families I, I would like to have descendants from. So we're still open um, to do that. And this is what we're in the process of doing right now. Um, Bill's putting on the gold seals and signing every one of these, what is it, 175 uh, pioneer certificates that uh, we took applications until May 1st. 
So the Pioneer certificates are going to be issued. If you have a family, um, they'll be mailed out within the next couple of weeks. So thank you all for coming and appreciate it. Anybody have any questions? Yes. Hi. I just uh, was looking at, I believe the Huber family has, was um, an old Reese family, possibly. A U V E R? Yeah. yeah. Huber. Yeah. Okay. George Huber is the. the yeah. Uh, is I my great grandfather. He was my um, grandfather, Roy Cole's wife, was Olive Huber. Okay. And that was her father. Well, I had a friend who, I think, maybe they, she has since moved over to Massachusetts, but anyway, her, um, they named, I think, was Huber, her father, I think, was a town councilman, does that ring a bell anywhere? Um, George was a Mason, Yeah. so I don't know. Well, it would be like, being my father, that would be that generation, but I'm pretty old, so. Yeah, they were from our sports sense sport. Presented by the Greece Historical Society. Want to learn more from the Greece Historical Society and Museum? Then click that subscribe button for more content and hit that bell icon to get notified when there's more bicentennial snapshots. You can visit us on the web at greasehistoricalsociety.org. You can find us on Facebook at Greece Historical Society. You can follow us on Twitter at Greece NY History. And you can stop in at the Greece Historical Society at 595 Long Pound Road.